Hi mate and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel. I'm Antonov2 as usual and today I've got a really nice game lined up for you guys. This is Adrian1 in his T62A and he spawned on Malinovka in an encounter battle. So he's doing something quite interesting here because he's heading out to uh, the F7 area and he's trying to locate behind these bushes here. I've never actually done that before. It seems like quite a good idea and actually quite obvious for a medium tank like the T62A. So yeah, maybe I'll do that in future with my Leopard, for example. Now, in counter battles of Malinovka are always quite tricky because usually like, you can go to the hill and you basically get into a massive choke point and for the T62A, the hill is not really a good option because it hasn't got very good gun depression or you can try to flank round and you leave yourself very open without much cover and so on so yeah with a T62A and Malinovka and counter battle you could be in a better kind of situation but still uh, Adrian Bond's gonna hopefully try to make the most of it and this is a really good game so stay tuned now actually this is the second time that I record this video because I did it the first time and then my recording program crashed because apparently I didn't have enough uh, capacity on my hard drive anymore to save the uh, recorded program. So I had to redo this, this is the second time I'm doing it, so I'm a bit annoyed and frustrated already. So I hope it will be alright. And yeah, he's basically trying to get flanking shots in on all those tanks up there on the hill. There's a bat chart, an FE and stuff, piles of tanks. and. It's looking quite bad actually for our team because if you think of it, there are way more tanks up there on the hill than our team has got tanks. And I really think in the counter battle on Malinovka, the team spawning in the south has got a bit of a disadvantage. Because if you think of it, the enemy team in this situation can get full control of that hill at A0, while our team can only advance to basically the ridge line where you top the hill but they cannot actually get to the top without being shot at because the team spawning in the north somehow gets up a lot more quickly so I think that gives the northern team uh, quite a big advantage over the southern team uh, please let me know what you think about that in the comments but for me personally it really doesn't seem fair because from that kind of situation the uh, vantage point up the hill the red team in this situation can put quite good sniping fire down on tanks like for example Adrian Bon here in his T62A that are trying to go around the south and that option really is not available to the southern team in my opinion. Now he's trying to get shots in here and he realizes that he can maybe hit the T125 but a shot misses not all that much for T125 showing and the T44 misses luckily as well he would like to keep on firing probably but there's an E75 progressing to a situation uh, not situation position sorry and um, he realizes that the T125 is aiming at him as well so he decides not to take any risks and draws back at the cover Next is going to try to put some fire down on the AMX 5120. He fires his first shot fairly clutch, but now he goes into sniper mode. Puts a blind shot in. And next is going to focus down that IS-3. One shot. That's the absolutely average damage, 320. That's what it says in the stats. And now he does the right decision, I think. He decides to focus the AMX 5120 because he's got a lot more dangerous gun than the IS-3. But the AMX 5120 is killed by the IS-4, so he goes back to the IS-3 and unexplainably that shot misses. But now he can get the kill, but <laughs> no, that shot misses as well. Denied by RNG. Oh my days, I would be so frustrated in that situation. If that would happen to me, I would just be cursing. I cannot believe RNG sometimes. Like he was he was aiming at that tank, like he was just aiming at the center of mass, like his entire reticle was basically filled out by that IS3 and still the shot missed. And this tank here has got something like 3.4 accuracy, I think, so I really don't understand why that one didn't hit. And twice in a row. It's ridiculous. So right now Adrian decides to progress along the bottom of this ridge here, which is quite interesting. I've never actually seen anybody do this before, I think. 
and it's actually quite cool because you can basically progress to the enemy spawn point all the way along here. Now he decide um, he tries to get up the ridge, but it's too steep, so he just keeps on driving. And one thing I forgot to mention up to this point is that you may notice that he's got uh, 105 octane gasoline loaded instead of a fire extinguisher. And that's quite a good decision, I'd probably do that too, because on medium tanks, the maneuverability is everything, and the gasoline gives you 5% more speed and turret traverse, which is always nice. Now, the t 62 a isn't the best armor tank in the game, it's got, its armor values are comparable to those of a Type 59, uh, its turret armor is a bit better, but the whole armor is nearly the same. So, he's doing some very good angling here, making the AMX 5100 bounce all the same. And right there you can see his eagle eye perk working, I think it is eagle eye, I'm not quite sure, but I think it is. Uh, let me know in the comments if I'm wrong. Anyway, the, what, what it does is it shows you damaged modules if you uh, light up an enemy tank. So basically, if you put your cursor over an enemy tank, it will show you what modules are damaged and if they are absolutely destroyed or only kind of critically damaged. So I think that's quite useful because, for example, if you're in a 1-1 one -one situation at the end of the game and you can find out what your enemy's ammo racked, that's always very, very useful information to have. And I'm thinking about picking up this perk on some of my T10 tanks, for example, for IS-4, because I've soon got my fourth skill set unlocked in that tank. Now, Adrian's team is leading. Uh, it's, the score's 9-8, but it's still, like, nothing's decided yet. It can swing either way, really. So he still has to, he can't lean back and, you know, just let things go their way. He has to really try to influence the game still because, for example, the enemy team has got a FE215B183 on six kills, so he's on quite a run. So he has to watch out for that guy. And he puts his first shot in on the T125 there. Fairly clutch, lucky that it hit. And right here you can really see the way the bad gun depression of a T-62A restricts your gameplay opportunities actually. Because for example it's very difficult for Adrian here to hit the T-125. Now that was a great leading shot on the T-44. Very, very spontaneous, very flexible play there. I personally probably wouldn't have been able to do that to kind of uh, move my mouse. So yeah, now he's figuring, I f guess he's figuring out where to go next and he spots the FE. 215B183 ahead, so he reverses up the slope to get some shots in on the FE, but he retreats because, or I well, he doesn't retreat, but he drives back into the water here or into the low ground so that he doesn't get shot by the FE or by, for example, the E100, because he is not quite sure where the E100 and the IS-7 are at this point, and the FE spotted him, so he could be sniped at any minute, so he has to be quite careful now. He's quite sure that he's re stealth again. So he tries to get some more shots in on the FE, but he can't quite make it. So he decides to drive up the slope a bit further. And here we go. A little bit of the FE showing, and he makes the kill happen, securing the fourth in this game. And now the score's looking a lot better. It's 13 to 12, and there's only the E100 and the IS7 left. So, yeah, he has got quite a good chance now. And. The object 268 has already got one kill, so he doesn't seem to be completely useless. Now, the Super Persian, as I already mentioned, will not probably be able to do all that much in this game. But you may notice that he's down to only 8 rounds for armor piercing, composite rigid ammunition. So, I, again, he's firing most of his shots in, in third person. I really don't like that. And now he's going into uh, sniper mode. And this, even the side of an E100 can be very tough to penetrate with a 100mm gun. So he's doing his best, but you know, at this range you cannot really aim for weak spots or something, so he just has to aim for the center of mass. The E100 is trapped. And can he get another shot in? He's down to his last round of APCR ammo now. And that one penetrate. Now he's to heat ammo and firing heat ammo off the side of an E100 is quite difficult because it's got lots of pen but because of the side skills of the E100 which counters spaced armor, he will not usually be able to penetrate those because heat ammo doesn't really work against spaced armor. So he has to really go for the turret if he has to if he wants to have a chance. Now that the E100 is facing him front on, 
he can go for the lower glaciers, for example, but he isn't using sniper mode. So I really do not like that, and he's taking quite a risk here, firing at the E100 with the object 268 in front of him. So, yeah, he's going into sniper mode now. He should have done it earlier, in my opinion. But he manages to take out the E100, and he's down to two shells of ammunition now. Uh, five rounds, and only the IS-7 left. So the FE says that the IS-7 is AFK at H9. So yeah, it could be right, but Adrian still has to be careful because it might be that the FE is trying to trick him into going to H9 and then, for example, being ambushed by the IS-7. So he still has to play that very carefully here. You never know. So the FE says he was out of ammo, and I mean, he played a monster game, he got 9 kills, so he, yeah, you cannot really complain about him. And as you can see, uh, Adrian's playing it quite carefully here, he isn't going to H9 directly, he's kind of diverting along these bushes here, trying to mask his approach, and he's trying to spot the IS-7 from right here because he really does not want to risk being ambushed. The Super Persian is starting a cap. And he's on very low health right here, so he has to be careful. So he's making his way towards H9, and there is the IS-7, and Okay, good. He seems to be AFK. So he puts first shot in. And the FE... No, not the FE. What am I thinking about? The Object 268 absolutely wrecks that IS-7 before Adrian could put in its second... Um, it's his second shot. So yeah, that was a really good game. Uh, from the replay, I didn't think it was as good as it turned out to be. So let's check out the after game stats to see exactly what we're looking at here. So, these are the post-game stats of that game, and Adrian1 managed to pick up 159,689 credits and 2,277 experience, but he was running a premium account. He also got a Spartan medal and Confederate, which is always really nice. Uh, just look at these results here. All the tanks he damaged and critted and spotted, it's really amazing. If we look at the team's score, he managed to deal out an amazing 8,500 damage. That's ridiculous. In a T62A, like considering that this tank does only 320 damage a shot, <laughs> that's absolutely amazing. Like if this is a result I would be proud of in, for example, my AMX50 Fosh 155. And <laughs> he managed to pick up five frags and 1,518 experience, which is really good. Uh, for example, the next best uh, player on his team managed to get 911 experience and dealt out 3,447 damage. So he was by far the best in this game and really carried his team. Uh, he fired 49 shots, of which 41 hit and 32 penetrated, allowing him to do this amazing amount of damage. He received 8 hits, of which only 5 penetrated, so that means 3 ricochets, which is quite nice. He received 2,880 potential damage. Now, he detected 3 enemies, uh, damaged 11, which is really impressive, and destroyed 5. And he also picked up nearly 4k spotting damage, that is really good, all by tracking also. Now, he had to spend nearly 100,000 credits on repairs and ammo resupply. Uh, he, he was left with only 44,000 credits out of his nearly 160,000, but he could keep, obviously, all his experience, and that was just a massive result. This was one of the best games I've seen in a long time. Uh, thanks a lot for sending it in, Adrian. It was really good. It was nice to watch, and... <laughs> Getting this amount of damage in a medium tank is just really impressive. So uh, I hope you guys appreciate this. I hope you guys appreciated this video, and uh, we are nearly reaching 1,000 subscribers on the channel. I think it's about 980 at the moment. So maybe next weekend it will be at 1,000, and I've got a special lined up for you guys. It's going to be something like a replay contest, probably with loads of great prizes, maybe tier 8 premium tanks to give away. So stay tuned for that and. 
if you've got any great games, keep them safe because there's a contest coming up for my 1,000 subscribers and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy that. So anyway, I also hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider rating it below or even subbing to my channel and as usual, I hope I see you out there on the battlefield. Bye-bye.